My name is Faith, and I have some stories to tell. I'm a boxer bulldog mix. My mom and dad met me while I was being cared for at the Best Friends Animal Society in Utah and decided they wanted to adopt me. Now, I live in Muncie, Indiana, with Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary founders Pamela and Mike. In fact, I'm the ambassador for Grateful Rescue. It's a pretty sweet life. Sometimes I help my dad at the office, while other times I just demand attention from my mom. Tonight, we want you to gather around and listen to fun, interesting stories. We call it Faith's Book Nook. Each week, we pick a local celebrity or special person in the community to read a children's book that has an animal theme. We live stream it here each week. To be honest, I'm not sure what a live stream means. Anyways, make sure you're in your comfy chair because we're about to listen to a great story together at Faith's Book Nook. Is this one and Sarge and Jasper? Those are all the cats. And we have one dog. It is Paris, and it's a girl. And all the others are cats are boys. We got Jasper and Milo from Grateful Rescue, and that's it. What I like about Grateful Rescue is the dogs, and I can name my favorite one, which is Gizmo. He's really playful. Yeah. I like to chase the cat. She, really she goes to labor and likes tennis balls. And she's especially the one trying to fetch. Yeah. And only the one dad has. Thank you for supporting Grateful Rescues. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The dream of Grateful Rescue began the day I walked into the overcrowded, understaffed, and high-stress shelter to adopt a dog. A dog. One dog. A white Dalmatian lab mix they called Big Boy. But when I walked in, I couldn't believe what I saw. Dogs crated everywhere. In the hallways, in the laundry rooms, in the storage rooms, stacked on top of each other. The stench, the stress, the despair, it was all too much. As I passed each dog, they would sit pretty and straight, wagging their tails. But when I would walk on, they would erupt in fierce barking. It was as if they were screaming, please help me. It was heartbreaking. I had to get out of there, I couldn't bear it. But as I was leaving, I saw him, cowering in his cage, shaking and terrified. A small coon hound, with droopy ears and the saddest eyes I'd ever seen. 
He wasn't making a peep, just trembling. My heart was breaking. I left the shelter with Big Boy, but I couldn't get that terrified little coon hound off my mind. I cried for him and all the others that night. I went back the next day and I adopted that little coon hound. I named him Samson because I wanted him to be strong. But that wasn't enough. What about all the others? There must be a better way, a less stressful way to keep these homeless animals. We began setting up a living space for dogs on our 22 acre property. We sectioned off different yards for group play, added a climate controlled home with no cages, rooms, not cages. Then we began pulling dogs from shelters. In the fall of 2019, we purchased an additional 38 acres and made plans to house over a thousand animals, dogs, cats, and critters. We will make a difference in the way animals are kept, a place where the homeless can enjoy their lives as best they can while they wait for their forever families. No more shaking, no more fear. We are grateful. Wow, I know. <laughs> Why did we do our makeup tonight? <laughs> oh, brother, but at least I know. I mean, you have to have dedication. You have to have the vision. Uh, you have to push forward no matter how many things get in your way, like the COVID. Um, I mean, who would ever thought that that would happen just before they started the the rescue. Now, the, Pamela does still have the rescue going, but she wants to expand it to bring in over 500 dogs and 500 cats. Pamela, uh, I, I'm amazed. I remember, K, uh, KJ, I met Pamela a couple of years ago, and we met at a place called Mo and Johnny's for coffee. And I thought, and I meet, you know, we talked to a lot of people for Pet Pals TV, and I thought, well, this, she's a nice lady, and good luck with that. And then she gave me this huge sack <laughs> full of papers and and <laughs> folders that she had been to the um, Best Friends Animal Rescue and Sanctuary in Utah. And she says, I've done all my homework and I'm ready to go. And she has been. She has never wavered from that course. So it's so amazing. I yeah. Mean, and I know, like you said, Patty, I know, Pamela, that there were things that uh, that you thought would be ready by now. But the mm -hmm. fact that in this time, uh, you have still rescued so many pets. You're still doing everything that you can. You rescued my Johnny Storm. Oh, yes. um, you yeah. know, I, we, I, I'm just, I'm grateful mm -hmm. that you are here with us and that you are so dedicated and so passionate to what you are building with Grateful Rescue. And I know so many people can't do this. They don't have the wherewithal uh, and they, or they, they just can't for many reasons, but we can use Pamela as an inspiration and a role <laughs> model uh, for what we, what people, look at what's going on in the world. People can do good things and people can help other people and critters. I mean, that's very, very important because what would we do without our dogs and cats and that's critters right. with all that we're going through now? Pamela, we haven't let you, we've been just applauding you and haven't let you speak. <laughs> oh, <that's okay. laughs> you made us so emotional. <laughs> um, tell us about, about the, the dogs that you have now, the ones that you've adopted and, and where we are with the Grateful Rescue. Well, we're coming right along. We're running business as usual. We've got our petitioning finished and breaking ground this spring. And so we're on our way finally. And oh, there's Johnny's storm. Johnny storm. Yes. He's grown so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my heavens. He's, He's a big kitty. Yes. Almost eight pounds. I didn't mean to distract you. Pamela. Oh no. <laughs> Just a short time ago, he was like, hey, hey, <laughs> Oh, I love him. Mm -hmm. I do, though. I love them all. I love them all so much. And it's a labor of love. It, I mean, the kudos is really nice, but it's so easy to do. I mean, I love, I mean, it's not an easy job to do, but no. 
it's easy in the heart to do because it, it really does make such a big difference. And the story I'm trying to paint in, in that book is, is the story that many people encounter when they go into a shelter. A lot of people will choose to shop instead of rescue because they can't handle the grim scene that happens when they see so many dogs begging for a home. Right, right. And, um, yeah. and it is sad. Um, so my so my my goal is to open up a stress free shelter where they have room to roam and they're not screaming to be free. They're just enjoying their life as best they can until right. until the right person comes along that they choose. <laughs> uh, right, and you did adopt a dog too in a kennel. Had you were telling about kennelitis? Remember we talked about that some time ago. Um, and. She was just out of control, but she's fine now, right? And you, yes, that was that was Ivy, and Ivy, Ivy was um, she was spinning in her cage, and that's usually the last thing that happens before they before they euthanize them because <gasps> they need to put them out of their misery. They've gone kennel crazy. When they start spinning in their cage, the next um, step is self mutilation and and things like that. They really oh do go gosh. crazy. But wouldn't you? I mean, it's solitary nah. oh. confinement day in, yes. day in, day out. It's people screaming all the time. I mean, the dogs screaming in their ears. And so it is really, it is really hard on them. And I know some shelters can't help that. I mean, they, right. they do the best with what they can. Do the best they can. Um, right, right, right. That's no way um, intended to um, put down a shelter. It's just the, it's just the sad truth of, mm -hmm. of the way some shelters are. And we luckily got um, access to a lot of land so we can, we can do things a little different. So right, right. Well, Dogs and then and you're, you're making and a difference with those other shelters because you're taking some of that burden off and making it easier on on the pets and the people that are working in in other rescues and shelters that maybe can't do that. So right, right. hopefully, it's a trickle effect, right? It is, and that's our that's our plan to um, to tap all the other shelters around us and saying, "Who do you need to get out of there?" And we'll right, and we'll right. take them because we'll have room for. Hundreds. <laughs> so. And and let me add just a little something uh, on a lighter note, literally and figuratively. How's Faith doing on her diet? Oh, she's doing really well. <laughs> she's doing really well. I haven't weighed her for a while, but she's close to about <laughs> ten pounds down. It does oh. go slow because we're um, we're in the winter time, and she doesn't want to go out very long. And, and if I took sure. her for a walk, I don't want to be out there <laughs> either. So, um, but she's doing great. Faith is wonderful. I tell well, you, she's yeah. one of the best dogs I've ever seen. Oh, uh, well, that's something we do too. When during the pandemic and when it's cold, when you love your animals, you give them a lot of treats. And yes. I know, I know, Mabel's sweaters are getting a little tight, so oh <laughs> I, I'm worried about that too. All right, kids, I'm going to let you carry on. Pamela, you know that I love you. Uh, KJ, love you Thank uh, you. you're wonderful. Uh, KJ, our kitty correspondent, look for her every weekend on Pet Pals TV. I'll let you folks continue, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. I yes. love you. See you later. Bye, Patty. <laughs> and I know that, um, Pamela, we have, you know, it, obviously that was super adorable and so many comments about uh, just how cute that book was and how good the boys did. Uh, we have a, a, an announcement for, uh, you know, people who have kids and want to make sure that they are reading and it's a, a way to be a part of Grateful Rescue. That's right. We are one of the current trends with the pandemic going on. You know, we offer the animal assisted literacy program where children read to dogs in person. Well, you can't do that so much right now. So actually virtual reading with dogs is taking off. And so we're we're doing it, too. We are launching next month a program called Wag the Dog Readers. And it's very exciting. You can go to wagthedogreaders.org. We are currently putting that website up, so it's not quite up, but you can still sign up for the program on gratefulrescue.org. And what we do is uh, we have a whole panel of dogs and you can choose your favorite dog and um, set an appointment with that dog and read stories to it. And then we, we want to encourage children to read 
more often because current studies are showing they're not reading as much. There's so much competition with the with the video games and all the external um, things that you can do that, 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 that don't, they don't require reading as much anymore in, in real life like you did in the old days where you read right. with a book. Um, so we we give incentives to these um, to the uh, club readers. Um, we we send them little baseball cards with the dogs. They can collect all the dogs with with the thank you card, and and there's a prize for each time you read a book. So now um, is this a uh, is, service? Is this uh, something that uh, Shirley, our special guest, is is helping with as well? Uh, she's a she's an educator, right? So uh, Shirley, you can. Is. You can kind of speak to the importance of getting these kids to read, right? Oh, reading every day is important, yes. And when I thought about this book, I wanted to write a book for young children that they could take and hold and say, I can read this book. And I work with first and second grade, some kindergarten. And when you ask them to read, they say, I can't read. I don't know how to read yet. So they first learn how to read pictures. and everyone for donating the lovely photographs that are in the book um, because it's a very simple book but the idea behind it as I pondered what my next book would be was talking about and thinking about in all of our lives we have to be rescued at some point whether it be through uh, a sickness an illness uh, lost or traffic accident whatever we're all rescued but we also need to be rescuers to help people. And I think it's important that young children learn that, that we are here to help others. And we all need the same thing. And we all need to treat each other kindly. We need to treat our pets and animals because all living things on this earth come together for each other. So that was the thinking behind the story. I had talked to Pamela um, about why I wanted to help Grateful Rescue. Uh, I don't keep any money from my books that I write. I believe that I have been given a gift um, to write, and that gift isn't to be kept, it's to be shared. So from all my books, I help people in the community, uh, and I wanted to help Pamela with uh, Grateful Rescue. And I was interested in about uh, the vet's help in getting them therapy dogs, and that's kind of how it started. Um, so then the story evolved about little kids and pets need the same thing. We all need the same thing. And the final part of the book is we all need love. And that's what it all boils down to. Um, so it evolved a simple book, but yet has big ideas that you can discuss while reading. Uh, when I learned to read and I sat on the couch with my mother, uh, looking at magazines, she would say, you know, look at the picture. Is this outside or inside? How do you know? What are the clues? Well, that got me to studying the pictures and seeing what got my brain ready to think about what is going on. And that's what we do in reading. We look at our pictures first and discuss and think, and then the words will follow. So the boys did a wonderful job and I wish I could hug them and tell them, thank you. <laughs> uh, they did great. I was very proud of them. I was proud as well. And, and he said the very same thing. He said, I can't read yet. So I, I said, you'll be able to read this book. I love the picture books and we have them for sale on our website. Just go to gratefulrescue.org and you can purchase this book. All money goes toward our reading program that we are launching. So buy a picture book and support our Wag the Dog Reader program. It's all coming and together. Thank you, Shirley, for this. This is I'm so glad, so glad that your story is in the back of the book so everyone can have that story. That was thank beautifully you. done. Thank oh, it you. is in the back of the book? I was going to ask. Okay. It is in the back of the book. And I wanted to say something about that Samson. Um, he's he's uh, been he's been adopted now, and um, he was a therapy dog for um, uh, an emotional therapy dog for an older gentleman who had Alzheimer's, 
And um, Samson was by that man's side day in, day out. And the man did pass away and Samson never left his side until they till they took him away. So he, he served, he served well. So, and he's a good dog. And every now and then I get to keep Samson when, um, when the, when the mama goes on vacation or goes out of town, she brings Samson over. So he'll stay for a few days. And that's big boy. That's the one that launched all this that exposed me to the, um, the sad truth of, of some shelters that are just, just packed. Um, and he's rotten. I still have him. <laughs> he keeps getting returned. He's never going oh, no. <laughs> oh, but you love him anyway. Oh, I love him with all my heart. Oh, with all my heart. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, surely we can't thank you enough. There's our, there's our site that we'll be launching soon. And you can also go ahead and sign up for um, for uh, Wag the Dog Readers Club. And what we'll do is we'll be reaching out to everybody in February when we get all the dogs set and get their schedules set with their handlers. And um, and then you can um, start scheduling appointments where you can read to these dogs. And it's it's a really super program. I love it. And I think and I it's just what it takes to get these kids interested in coming back for more. Yes. And I mean, how cool to be able to, you know, tell your kids, not only are you reading to a dog, but this, you know, this, this is a dog that you're making a difference in, mm -hmm. in, in, in this dog's life too. Like, again, like, you know, surely talking about the, we all, we all need to be rescued. We all need to rescue too. I mean, it opens up that conversation for responsible pet ownership and why it's important that we're doing this. Um, but also encourages them to get in the habit of reading. So it's it, it in the absolutely. fact that the fact that you are offering it for free is absolutely amazing. I, I, I certainly hope that we uh we reach enough parents tonight and spread the word. And if you're watching this, uh please tell your friends and family. I know I'm I you'll see you saw my nephews with Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love them. You're oh, gonna I be seeing them. my nephews with these dogs. I promise you that. They're gonna oh, be God. they're gonna be reading. <laughs> <laughs> they were adorable. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> The enthusiasm, I loved it. <laughs> well, thank you again, Shirley. I mean, what uh, definitely a gift that you have. I mean, the, 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 as you said, the book is so simple, but at the same time is so meaningful. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. You've touched so many lives. I mean, whenever I have lunch with Shirley, I can't even explain how many people come up to Shirley and talk about how their children were touched forever by her through her years of teaching. So you're an angel on earth, Shirley. <laughs> we love you and appreciate you. <laughs> all the kids that you've helped and now all the pets you're gonna help too. Thank you so much, Shirley. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. All right, and again, uh, wagthedogreaders.org. You can get yourself ready to go with this amazing program. Get your kids excited about it. Uh, there's the website again, wagthedogreaders.org. And something else that we are getting really, really excited about uh, is our bingo night. Oh, yeah. Yay! Valentine's yeah. Day. Yes, what a perfect, like, okay, we have to stay in. How can we make this Valentine's Day special? Well, you can stay, order in, get your favorite, you know, delivery, and sit by candlelight if you want and play bingo with us. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to be featuring some really amazing stories of couples who have met because of a pet. So if you are a couple or you know someone who has a really great story, we are uh, looking to tell some love stories that all began because of one of our furry family members. So uh, please reach out to us uh, on the Grateful Facebook page or on my Facebook page and you can get signed up right now, gratefulbingo.com uh, to reserve your bingo card and join us for the fun. I know we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have prizes 
Pamela, I'm going to have some of our, our I Play Bingo and I Help Pets shirts that we can give away as well that night. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, I'm really excited. I got mine in the mail. So I was like, ah, oh, I have I to. I just got a notice that mine had shipped. I haven't received it yet, but I'm watching the mail. Ah, uh, yes, it's right here. This is I Play Bingo. And I got to stand oh, up a little there it is. Yeah, let me move this big microphone for a second, and then you can see I play bingo and I help pets. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's good. It's going to be a really fun night. Uh, not only about uh, love when it comes to uh, loving our pets, but also how our pets have actually uh, made a difference in people finding love. And I found out, Pamela, there's an app that we're gonna be talking about that is actually an app set up specifically for people in this area who are looking to connect with other pet lovers. Oh, very cool. It's very gonna cool. be all about the love. How long has that been invented yet? I can't believe that. I don't know. <laughs> really? I, you know what? I, I, got, I, I found out about it myself today and said, I gotta talk to you about that. Uh, thank you, Kathy. She said, uh, I like that shirt. Oh, yes. um, if, if you go to kjonair.com and click my shop, it's actually there and I'm selling them to, you know, benefit Grateful Rescue as well. So if you would like to get an I Play Bingo and I Help Pets shirt, they come in different colors and sizes uh, <laughs> and you can tag yours and maybe have it uh, ready by the time we're playing bingo on Valentine's Day. So cute. <laughs> Thank you, KJ. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it, it was so, so great to see you, Pamela. What a, a, oh, always what a an pleasure. emotional book look tonight. <laughs> oh, no, it was short, but really sweet. Was it? Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. And I thought before we go tonight, for those who may have missed the book reading, why don't we play it again as we go? That was okay. so cute. Yes. Awesome. So I'm getting ready for that. It's just about ready. So thanks everyone for joining us on Book Nook, and we'll see you uh, next Sunday night at eight o'clock. Thank Good you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. We're reading with parents. Yeah. This is a book we're reading. We all need. We all need. This book is dedicated to my grandpa, Andy Trahune, and Rich Facker. is this one, and Sarge, and Jasper, those are all the cats, and we have one dog, it is Paris. And it's a girl, and all the others are cats are boys. We got Jasper and Milo from Grateful Rescue, and that's it. What I like about Grateful Rescue is the dogs, and I can name my favorite one, which is Gizmo. He's really playful. Yeah. I like to chase the cat. She really soft. She does labor and likes tennis balls. And she's especially really the one trying to fetch. Yeah. And like the one dad has. Thank you for supporting Grateful Rescue. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> the dream of Grateful Rescue began the day I walked into the overcrowded, understaffed, and high-stress shelter to adopt a dog. A dog. One dog. A white Dalmatian lab mix they called Big Boy. But when I walked in, I couldn't believe what I saw. Dogs crated everywhere. In the hallways, in the laundry rooms, in the storage rooms, stacked on top of each other. The stench, the stress, the despair, it was all too much. As I passed each dog, they would sit pretty and straight, wagging their tails. But when I would walk on, they would erupt in fierce barking. It was as if they were screaming, please help me. It was heartbreaking. I had to get out of there, I couldn't bear it. But as I was leaving, I saw him, cowering in his cage, shaking and terrified. A small coon hound with droopy ears and the saddest eyes I'd ever seen. He wasn't making a peep, just trembling. My heart was breaking. I left the shelter with Big Boy, but I couldn't get that terrified little coon hound off my mind. I cried for him and all the others that night. I went back the next day and I adopted that little coon hound. I named him Samson because I wanted him to be strong. But that wasn't enough. What about all the others? There must be a better way, a less stressful way to keep these homeless animals. We began setting up a living space for dogs on our 22 acre property. We sectioned off different yards for group play, added a climate controlled home with no cages, rooms, not cages. Then we began pulling dogs from shelters. In the fall of 2019, we purchased an additional 38 acres and made plans to house over a thousand animals, dogs, cats, and critters. We will make a difference in the way animals are kept, a place where the homeless can enjoy their lives as best they can while they wait for their forever families. No more shaking, no more fear. We are grateful.